So if you didn't know this about me, I, James, have a software as a service that I market to the internet infrequently. And it is a little resume builder cover letter thing because that's very interconnected with my other YouTube channel. And this fine weekend, I decided I was going to do some work on it. Now, we live in an age where AI is all the hype. Everybody's worried about it. It is a constant conversation piece. And I'm getting people messaging me being like, oh, James, I don't know if I should get into this career anymore because I'm worried that there won't be a position for me by the time I've learned to code, that everything will be replaced by AI. And I have lots of thoughts on it. And I also, you know, use it and try to stay up to date on it. And so I thought this would be the per perfect opportunity to put it to the test and see how effectively it works as a programmer. So I had this work that I needed to do. And I was like, okay, James, let's see if we can employ AI to do the work. And I'll see how the process goes and come to a conclusion and share it with the internet at the end of it, which is exactly what I'm about to do. So... Before we dive in, let's look at what the task is that I had the AI do. If you didn't know, my software is called Hire.sh. As I said before, it's all about resumes, cover letters, using AI, and that you know quality of life, ease of use. Now, the feature I wanted to add that I wanted to get the AI to work on is essentially mobile printing. Now, obviously, if you're building a PDF resume, you have to be able to print it to or export it to a PDF. And the convenience of being able to do that on your phone would be wicked because where do you find most of the jobs that you want to apply for? Probably while you're scrolling through LinkedIn or something like that. Now, printing to PDF on a mobile device in a mobile browser is notoriously challenging if you actually want a nice looking PDF. And so I was like, well, ChatGPT, I chose ChatGPT because yeah, right, am I going to have more than one subscription to an AI service? And ChatGPT has been pretty good for me historically, so I th figured I'd stick with them. Also, I have trust issues. You know, I struggle to let other humans into my code bases, let alone an AI. So I said to ChatGPT, I want to have a new system. There was an existing system, but it wasn't up to standard. I want a new system to enable print to PDF and all sorts of customization in terms of scaling, making sure that the design, the fonts, the layouts, the icons, everything is immaculate in that print. That's something I want built into my software. Now, the way that we worked, as I said a second ago, I didn't let the AI actually into my software. So I kind of just like hired it to as a consultant to tell me what to do, almost like a junior employee. And together we worked collaboratively to create and test out these features. Now, the, before we dive into this, first, good to know, summary of the experience, there were four solutions we tried. The first solution I ended up trying, thanks to ChatGPT, was with a package in the no NPM ecosystem called HTML2 PDF. And so we spent a good long while developing a system that would, you know, essentially use a canvas element and print the resume to the canvas and then export that to a PDF. And after a good long while, we kind of got it working. Now, ChatGPT led me down this long garden path of how this would be the perfect solution. And then when I eventually printed off these PDFs, I noticed that you can't actually select any of the text because you're essentially printing an image instead of you know, printing a text file to a PDF where you can go through the PDF and select all the text, which is actually, you know, critically important if you want uh, a resume that is friendly for any kind of screening, AI screening service or the ATS, Applicant Tracking System. You need to be able to recognize the text. And if it's producing it as an image, then that's not going to be very effective, is it? So, you know, let's say that was a good eight hours of faffing about for me to realize the flaw in the system and then have to say to ChatGPT, this probably isn't going to work, is it? And for it to be like, oh, yes, whoops. 
So that was round one. That was kind of what that looked like. And as I said, that was probably a good eight hours worth of work. Now, at this point, I felt that I could still salvage some of what we've done. I felt like there was a lot of customization that was added in terms of, you know, having these really dynamic scaling systems. So I was like, okay, well, let's see if we can salvage that and use a different package that instead exports it to a PDF, a text-based PDF where you can actually still have the text selection. And so ChatGPT came up with a bunch of solutions and in fairness, it probably pulled together the entire ecosystem of packages that I could have used for this specific, you know, use case, this functionality, printing to a PDF on a mobile device in a mobile browser. And so I got it to do a pros and cons of all of them. And eventually I selected a new package called React PDF. And then we went to work, ChatGPT and ChatGPT and I, and I had it do a whole lot of demos and I kind of adapted the demo and integrated it into my code base. And eventually we had a working system and this might've been another eight hours of programming, figuring out all the bugs, you know, the intricacies, getting all the use cases down that I wanted. And then eventually I had a kind of scuffed version working and I realized that the React PDF wouldn't recognize, uh, you know, a whole lot of my icon sets and all sorts of extra stuff that makes a resume look beautiful without overcomplicating all the nice little design elements. So essentially the, the, the limit or extent of this particular package is, you know, that you just have a very brutalistic, plain looking PDF resume, which is not really what we're going for here. We want a perfect print. Now, as much as this was a negative outcome, I wouldn't necessarily blame ChatGPT entirely for this, because I think, you know, if I imagine what it would be like working with a junior developer, I think that's probably in accordance with what I would expect from a junior developer is something that kind of works, but they haven't considered every single, you know, scenario or, uh, expectational requirement of what we actually need from this new feature. So I guess in this case, maybe it did a half decent job. Now, obviously there's, you can go into far more depth than just saying it did a reasonable job. You know, like what are we actually talking about? By this point, I can really say that ChatGPT is very good for high level stuff. As soon as you get down to the nitty gritty, it suffers. Like I would say it's probably got a max capacity of 300 lines of anything before it just starts to hallucinate. And in terms of the context, you know, as your chats get progressively longer, because you have to go back to be like, well, you failed to consider this up. You failed to consider that up. That's not going to work up. You've forgotten about this that correction process just dilutes all of the context that it has until it's essentially futile and you just have to start a totally blank chat with a new employee and bring them up to speed and start from you know ground ground base ground base and it's kind of painful anyway eventually we kind of got to a scuff solution i realized that it wasn't going to work and then we moved into the current solution, which is one that I'm actively working on at the second. And I feel like this one will be good when I eventually finish it and publish it a great new feature, because imagine being able to browse your phone, get a notification for a job quickly, download your tailored resume, download the AI written cover letter, submit them all in like 30 seconds. Like that just should be the workflow. So eventually I found a solution, but the thing is, I actually had to come up with the idea. You know, I I guess it built upon what we'd learned as a collective, but I came up with the idea of how to get it to work. And the AI was just like, yeah, we can do that. And I was like, oh, well, this wasn't suggested earlier, was it? And so I think it's just like, would I let it in my code base? Absolutely not. There is no way on this earth that I would ever let an AI into any kind of sophisticated code base that has any level of any level of complexity or, you know, 
it would just get lost in a heartbeat. It doesn't have the brain capacity to understand infrastructure. Now, in saying this, it does have some strengths. I would say if you want to throw ideas, bounce ideas off it in it for it to do for it to do a very high level validity check. Absolutely. But the thing about that is that you really have to have a deep understanding of what you want. And you also need to be well versed enough to be able to criticize its ideas because chat GPT is absolutely a yes, man. It would be like, yeah, you can totally do that. And you'd be like, but can it do that? And it's like, oh, whoops. No, it can't do that. Funny you mentioned it. And so it's just like a bit of a pain sometimes. Now, things that I've noticed it does do really well. If we think about dynamic programming, like there are so many brilliant examples of dynamic programming on the internet. So it serves to stand that it would be good at anything related to dynamic programming. So when it comes to writing scripts to handle data or logic and do that kind of manipulation, I would say it's actually fairly capable. So let's say, for example, I had a history of my caffeine intake over the last month and I wanted to calculate my maximum caffeine, average daily caffeine, uh, and what the top consumption sources were, it would happily go away and develop a function to do that. So it's quite capable in that kind of stuff. But if we think about, you know, full stack development, building web applications, that kind of infrastructure where suddenly it's not a dynamic programming problem, which is very one dimensional. It's like, you know, it's got design aspects. It's kind of a metaphysical construct where you have to, you know, you have to have an abstract understanding of what a user interface is going to look like. And it just doesn't have that level of imagination or it can't handle, you know, any level of uh, deep dive into complex infrastructure. So it can give you a very high level overview of things that may or may not work and some of the pros and cons, but it can't dive into them and simultaneously, you know, remain lucid and it just goes absolutely crazy and starts to make up all sorts of fantasy fairy tales. So I thought that was a really interesting experience. And how did it make me feel about AI in terms of what it's going to do to my job? Well, I can guarantee you that it just doesn't have the brain capacity at the moment to develop anything more sophisticated than what, you know, a five-year-old could probably do with a programming language after a two hour tutorial. Uh, and in saying that it does have absolute moments of genius far beyond what said five-year-old could do, but they are fleeting and they're just not at the end of the day trustworthy. You know, once again, half of this process was it giving me ideas and me having to really get to the bottom of them to be like, this is why these ideas just will not work. It can't give you that information. It can't, it doesn't have that level of foresight. Uh, so what do we have to worry about? Probably not that much just yet. If anyone's telling you that they can replace developers with AI, then I'm gonna, they're going to have a swift learning curve in terms of the amount of correction and validation they're going to have to do on their code bases. But it is pretty good. Let's say you don't know something about, some, you know, let's say you're not very well versed on a particular topic, for example, libraries to print to PDF on a mobile device. It spat out what the internet knows of that to me. And it gave me some good starting points that I could then investigate. And it gave me the stepping stones to get into them. So I think like in terms of utilizing it as an idea bouncing board to get you started going in the right direction, it can be good. But the condition to that is that good prompting gives good outputs, bad prompting gives bad outputs. So it's critical that you know what you want. You have to be able to talk about what you want without knowing what exactly that looks like, which can be, you know, a skill that needs to be developed. Anyway, that's just my two cents on the current status of AI as much as it's doing an absolutely brilliant job of building videos of Will Smith eating pasta. You know, that is something that is highly impressive. But if you have contrary or, you know, anecdotal experiences with AI and development, let me know about them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. And if you're looking to get into programming, don't stress, your jobs will still be there, even if there's all the hype around it at the moment. Catch you guys later. Peace.
learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos.